All right, we got a lot of foam. That is the gas. It's a good day here at Cars, Crafts, and Drafts because today is the day that we finally have everything we need to turn this old refrigerator into a kegerator. We've already got a keg in there that is a toasted lager from Blue Point Brewery here on Long Island. And the plan for this is to leave the front open and the side is where we're going to put the taps because if we put the taps here on the door, then it's going to interrupt opening the freezer door where we've got glasses and pitchers and whatever else we feel like sticking in there. So the taps are going to go here. Got a chalkboard stuck to the side. I'm going to have two taps. We'll have the tap, the, the beer names listed there. I installed this awesome track lighting. Very 80s. So let's start digging into this box and see what we've got. Everything that I'm gonna pull out of this box, I got as a kit from kegoutlet.com. And I got the two tap kit, which I believe off the top of my head, I think it's CK2200 or CK2000. I think it's 2200. So that's the kit I got. We're gonna crack open this uh, Hop Biscuit India Pale Lager from Tripping Animals Brewing in Miami while we set all this up. Let's get to it. So the kit pretty much came together more or less assembled. I did order a, uh, an aluminum five pound CO2 tank. And I learned that most of the places near me don't actually fill them. They just swap them out because they all get filled at a central location, uh, just about the middle of the island. And uh, so I wound up going last night, bringing my tank to a uh, welding gas supply they said, no, we don't fill them, we just swap them. So I wound up buying another tank. So now I've got two tanks. The one that I bought from Keg Outlet, I'll wind up uh, filling and keeping as a spare. But in the, in the box we've got, what do we got? Bubble wrap. This looks like uh, tap handles, tap wrench. Tubing. It's kind of a mess here. So here we've got the regulator for the CO2 tank. So we've got that. So these should be. Oh man. Easy. Oh, here's the tap for the keg. This is. I guess this is for the uh, the handle, the, the spout. So the tap for the keg. This is gonna be another spout, and looks like some kind of distribution block for the air. I'm guessing, and it appears I'm right. All pre self-explanatory. Another tap handle I was messing with before. That's a raisin. Uh, there's a raisin in here. Thanks, kids. So this will go in the tank. This will go in the kegs. This will go through the side of the fridge. Tap handle, I guess, goes like that. The spout. Looks right. And this is the. This is where the what the wrench is for, I suppose. Maybe not. I don't know how you would... Uh... So this is to tighten this up. That's what that's for. But this... Okay. Uh, okay, I see. That comes off. And then this goes on and you tighten it the other side, I'm guessing. Maybe not. Is that for this? I don't know, we'll figure it out. All right, that's... 
Ah, okay, that's for this. Okay. So I don't think that is for this, because this just won't fit. Which is fine. I've never done this before, so learning as I go. That looks about right. I guess we should start drilling. This line here is pretty much how high up I want to drill my holes. And that line pretty much corresponds with the center of this little bump out. It cuts in right about here, and I want to get a nice flat surface to drill on. So that line should be pretty close. So I'm going to measure up from the bottom of that line. I'm going to make it center. And I'm going to put one in the center, and then one a couple inches to this side. Because I might upgrade this to a three-tap down the road. And I like everything being centered, so I'm planning ahead. So I've got my line drawn across right about where I want to drill into the, uh, the side of the fridge. The fridge is about 26 and 3 quarter inches wide, which is 13 and 3 eighths? 13 and 3 eighths. I'm going with that. 13 and 3 eighths. Half. So I'm going to mark 13. And three eighths, and the center first tap. Oh, is that thirteen and three eighths? Yep. All right, thirteen and three eighths. And oh, I don't know. That's pretty good height for the tap handle. Next one maybe. Put it right here, ish. See how far over that is. That's about three and a half inches. Let's go three and a quarter. Okay. Now I'm going to do it the right way and punch these holes exactly where I want them. Turn, I'm gonna drill that out a little smaller first. Probably a better idea to do it this way. Now it's a point of return. Take this tape off and see how well we did with the holes. Good. There shouldn't have been any lines on the side anyway, but you never know. We'll put this in. And what I'm gonna do here, actually, because I don't want any of the foam and garbage getting in there, so I'm gonna put a little piece of tape over the end of this before I push it through. Same with the other side. 
Yep, almost forgot. This guy first. Nope, oh, other way. What am I doing? All over the place today. Okay. Now we're going to the inside. That's what we've got. So we've got the tap handle, the, uh, the spout it's going through. And they're just about level. They could be better, but they're all right. So we're going to thread these guys on. Oh, if I can hold that from the other side, keep it some, from spinning. There we go. Did I take... There we go. Now this nut seems to be an inch and an eighth. If this adjustable wrench is to be believed. I don't even know how tight to make this. It doesn't have to be super tight, but I don't want to crush the liner, the, the fridge. starting to bow so I guess that's probably good enough Good turn. That should be good. And same for this one. Another good one. Ah, you got a couple more good ones. That's good. You're starting to crackle. Now, same with you. Okay. Straighten these taps. What I'm going to do now is tighten these collars. And I guess they have to go this way. Seems right. Yep, that's nice and tight. And straight. Good. Look straight. Uh, straight enough. That's too much. Uh, that's good. So I've got the CO2 tank in there now. I got this distribution block screwed into the side. Got the keg back in. Now let's tap it. Actually, before we do that, I have a tray that I'm going to screw to the side of the fridge like a little uh, drip tray so i'm going to take care of that real quick then we'll tap the keg drip tray is in i might make up some kind of bracket to put here to uh just give that a little more strength I mean, it looks, it's pretty sturdy but might take care of that in the meantime before we tap the keg i'm going to polish off this that i've been sipping off camera Good stuff. Got the CO2, got the distribution block. The middle one is going to be what we're going to tap. I'm going to leave that off for now. Let's pop that off. See if I can set you down somewhere. Perfect. And the middle tap is going to be this should be tangled. Tangled up. G. 
yeah, I think I'm all tangled up here. So we're all detangled. Now I'm gonna tap this keg. And I haven't tapped a keg like this probably since I was 14 years old, working at a bar at a golf course. I'm gonna open up the gas. There we go. It's full, so that's good. They say what, between 10 and 14 PSI? It's not really very clear on your end. Uh, it's set at about 10. I'm going to dial that up to uh, 14. No, 12. Let's see, that's probably 10, 12. Yeah, it's 12. All right. So that's 12. Let's uh, get you back in your little nook. And we'll tap it. first that way we don't get a whole bunch of beer spewed into the uh the lines it was calling me all right that was work calling but i'm back with you now perfect so we got you in there i think you're in there all the way Any old turn anymore. so let's valve open gas on got pressure let's all right we got a lot of foam there's the gas. Oh, sh Apparently, I had the tap on. Well, good thing I put the drip tray there. All right, well, let's make sure these are straight. That one's straight. That one's straight. Before I pour myself a glass, I got something special here. Oh, easy girl, easy girl. Let's see if I can tighten that up. Blue point, toasted, tap handle. Oh no! It's too tall. Jesus, I can't win. All right, so I got the drip tray cleaned out. I got the tap handle on, and to be honest, it's cool to have, and I really look forward to using this with the toasted that I've got, but it hits the, the chalkboard. I just don't know if it's gonna be, if it's back enough where it's not gonna drip. I'm probably just gonna want to take it off putting the uh, regular one back on. But let's get a uh, frosty glass here. We got Holtzville Fire Department. Oh, ninth annual parade, 1985. Year I was born, if you could believe that. So I'm gonna pour this, I'm gonna try and, let's see if I can do that. That's gonna be sideways for you guys, that's not gonna work. All right, let's do this. All right, let's see how she does. A little foamy, it's all right. Very foamy. It's all foam. All right, well, now this is the first uh, kegerator I've had, so I don't know if it's a, uh, I might have the pressure dialed up too high. It's pouring good now. Let me get another glass. This one is a Medford Fire Department, 58th anniversary, also 1985. Okay. These are all glasses that were in my grandfather's basement when we bought the house. Also foamy. All right, so I got some adjusting to do, but that's the, the gist of it, I guess. It working. I just have to die down the air a little bit. So I finally got a nice pour out of it. It's been settled for a couple minutes, but it's much better than it was. Mm, it's good. So that's uh, pretty much all it takes. It's not a very difficult job. It takes some time. You gotta fill up some cans. You gotta put the other shelf in and some stuff on the door. 
Yeah, I can put stuff on the door. It's still coming out a little foamier than I like, but yeah, see what happens. It's good for now. Thanks for watching. Cheers.